Hi, Clint Coons here, and in this video, we are going to discuss asset protection for the passive real estate investor. All right, let's get started. Okay, if you're a passive real estate investor, that means that you're buying properties to hold long term and you want to collect the rental income from those properties. I get it. That's a great way to invest. In fact, I am an avid passive real estate investor. I used to flip properties uh, for a couple of years and I realized, you know, that the money is made in collecting those checks every month at the mailbox. Well, if you're going to be a passive real estate investor, there's a number of different options you have. But the number one options that I like to use really depends on the type of income that you're currently making. And then from there, we can determine what is the best structure for you. So I'm going to break this down into two different income levels. Those of you who make less than $250,000 a year of adjusted gross income and those that make more. So if you're on the less than 250, what you should do is create a limited liability company. If you watch one of my other videos where I discuss about the importance of anonymity, in creating your structure. Watch the video on the very first LLC you should create if you're going to be a real estate investor. This would be your Wyoming limited liability company. Let's assume that uh, you're buying single family homes and we're not dealing with commercial here. So you've got your Wyoming LLC. That would be the very first LLC you create. Then you're going to create LLCs that are set up to hold your various real estate investments. And all of them will be owned. All of these LLCs up here will be owned by that Wyoming limited liability company. And then you're going to be down here and you're going to own this Wyoming LLC. Now, if you're making under $250,000 a year, then with this LLC, what's really important is choosing the proper tax status for it. See, an LLC is a hybrid entity. So you can choose to have a tax as a C Corp, an S Corp, a partnership, or a disregarded entity. Now, depending on what you plan to do going forward, so that is if you intend to work with lenders and you want to continue to grow your portfolio so you'll be uh, obtaining additional loans, then I would suggest that you set this LLC to be taxed as a partnership. I'll just use P for that. You're going to use partnership. The reason why I'm going to recommend partnership tax status is that in a partnership, it's going to give you a K-1. So this entity will file a tax return. Now, why do I want it to file a tax return? Well, it comes down to how I want people to perceive me. You know, sophisticated real estate investors, they invest through limited liability companies, limited partnerships, and on their tax returns, their 1040s, which of course is what the underwriter is going to ask for when you apply for a loan, they're going to look at your 1040 and if they're going to see a K-1 from an LLC. So that LLC, of course, owns various properties is what they're going to notice uh, on that K-1. And so the message you're sending to the underwriter, hey, I look like those sophisticated investors who invest in LLCs treated as partnerships or limited partnerships. So the whole concept here is that I want the underwriters to think that I am a real estate professional, that I have the experience, the knowledge, the know-how to go out and invest in real estate. Now, of course you do because you're, you've taken trainings on it or you've been doing it. But the point of the fact of the matter is, is that I want to convey that with how I prepare my returns because the alternate approach, which is if you don't plan to buy any more property, is you can have this entity set up as a disregarded entity. I'll just put D on there. And so if it's a disregarded entity, then you're not going to have to file a tax return because all of your income and loss and the properties are all going to flow down onto your 1040 and show up on page one of your Schedule E. So the real distinction here is what do you plan to do with your business going forward? So if you want to continue to grow and you're going to work with additional lenders, then I would suggest you have this tax as a partnership. So it files a K-1. That comes on to your 1040, not on page one of your Schedule E, page two. And it tells the underwriter, hey, I'm a sophisticated real estate investor and I've set up my structures like other sophisticated real estate investors do. Again, painting the image I want them to understand. If you're not going down that road and you're not looking to borrow money, then just keep it as disregarded. Let them all flow onto your 1040. It doesn't matter because you're not going to be working with anyone where that may be important. Now, I did say that if you make more than $250,000 a year, you may want to look at a slightly different tax structure for this. So if you're making over $250,000, then one of your concerns is going to be the uh, net investment income tax that we have or NITI tax. 
And the way you can help minimize that tax on your rental income is to set up this Wyoming LLC, same structure, but you don't want to tax as a partnership. You don't want to tax as a disregarded entity. I would look at S Corp tax status. Again, that's going to file a tax return. It's going to give you a K-1, but it's also going to help reduce your taxes on your rental income. So you're going to get a few things here if you're making over $250,000 a year. Now, if you're wondering, why don't I just tell everyone to set up as an S-Corp? Because there is a significant drawback to this tax election. And that has to do with the S-Corp itself. When you make that S-Corp tax election on your LLC, if you have properties up here and you want to pull them out, well, if you take them out, then that could be that will be a taxable event at the corporations uh, or at the LLC's tax bracket, which flows down to you, which actually is taxable to you. So that can be a concern. You just can't move appreciated assets out of an S corp without getting hit with a tax. So once you set it up, these properties are going to be locked in there. Now, why would you ever want to move ones out? I'm not sure. Maybe you, you want to give a property over to one of your kids and you want to bifurcate it off. Well. That would be an issue for you. You'd have to sell it. So you're giving up a little when you make over $250,000 a year to go with the S Corporation tax status, but you're going to save on taxes. Hey, if you like what you're seeing here on my YouTube channel and you want to go deeper and you want to learn more, just to let you know, we teach three-day asset protection workshops all over the country. In these workshops, we go really deep into all these topics and show you how to set this up. And more importantly, we meet with everyone one-on-one -on -one to help them design a plan. This is your opportunity. If you're interested in attending one of our workshops, go right into the show notes now and you can see a link there where you can register for one of my upcoming three-day tax and asset protection workshops for real estate investors. So those are some things that I would look at when it comes to setting up my limited liability company for my passive real estate investments. You're going to use LLCs. You're not going to need corporations. Go with this type of structure here. But what's key is how you choose the tax status for this holding LLC.